Hey, what's going on, you two? It's so coming at you here, feeling great. I hope you are too. We are about to be installing some new LEDs inside Little Blue. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's an absolute pain in the butt trying to find anything in this car when it's dark outside. Always fumbling around, getting pissed, never finding what I need. Well, hopefully not anymore, for in this video, we're going to be installing some Minger 72s, a nice four-piece setup LED kit. Uh, we got her sitting inside, sound activated, pretty damn cool, so I figured I'd make this video. So let's hop inside and give you guys a closer little look of what we're talking about. The kit we chose comes with four LED strips, some spare stickies, a 12-volt power switch, and a three-button controller. At first glance, everything looks great. Nicely protected LEDs, plenty of wire, but then you get a little bit closer and realize it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Sticking out like a sore thumb, the housings are clearly not sealed. Even though the ratings do say waterproof, there's no way these things would stay dry outside. Not to mention the wires could just break off because there's no glue holding them in place. With that said, we're gonna take it upon ourselves to go through here and add a little bit of safety measures with some hot glue. A nice good splooge around the edges will help her stay 100%, but for 18 bucks, you really can't expect too much detail from a factory. One thing you you could say helps make up for it though is the smartphone app. These lights come Bluetooth ready, connects right to your phone, matches to music, and can change all sorts of cool stuff. There's just one more thing that has me thinking. Does this long length of wire affect how evenly the light is spread out? In other words, are the last set of lights in the chain as bright as the first set of lights, which are over 20 feet away? Since most people run separate wires anyways, we'll go ahead and test the effectiveness of each strip in the dark. All right, so here's the deal. In order to make sure these have a nice even distribution of light, we're gonna go ahead and take each individual strip and point it behind us, illuminate the back room and set up the video screen into quadrants and make sure that each one of them at least looks relatively spot on from one to the next. Oh, that's a relief. Seems like the long length of daisy chain doesn't seem to have too much of an effect on the light. Good little tidbit there, saves on wire and helps keep prices of these kits down. So what do you say? How about we hop back outside and get this thing plugged in? About to start the project here. I mean, it's nothing special. We're just gonna be doing a little bit of accent lighting here, similar to what we did in Frankenstein, down the kicks, just to illuminate anything on the road trips if I drop anything. So we're gonna start by going and plugging everything in right to our cigarette lighter. We're gonna use that for what it's worth. We got about 18 inches of cord, and we'll try to make that a little bit neater going into that panel on the side. Even though it's probably not the strongest stuff in the world, it'll be more than enough for what we need it for, so I'm just gonna Apply it on the back side, probably somewhere right along this line, like this. There we go. All right, so I think I've just had a change of plan. Instead of doubling up the LEDs right here, because they do seem to be fairly bright, I'm gonna run the line right down here, because we do end up putting a lot of stuff back there for storage, and it would be nice to have a light of some sorts to see what the heck is going on back here sometimes. So it just so happens that there is a piece of plastic running along the side of our seat. So instead of sticking it to the fabric, we'll get a nice bond to the piece of plastic that's already stuck there. Sweet. All right, so here's the last two strips. Excuse the little messiness here, still gotta throw a vacuum down. And we've just plumbed through here on the place of where the emergency brake meets the stripper pole. Do the same thing on this plastic piece on this seat. And then we're gonna be having all of them already pre-wired. We'll do a couple more zip ties in here, get some of the wires out of the way. And uh, yeah, sooner or later, this thing's gonna be glowing. And just like that, we got everything all stuck in place, wired up, thanks to how easy the kit was all pre-assembled, pretty much just plug and play. And you gotta admit, for it being so dang bright outside, you can still see a lot of the lights shining through. Man, I am so hot. Beautiful day, but we're gonna have to wait until the end of it to really get a good view in the nighttime of how these LEDs look inside Little Blue. Let's fast forward the tape and make some movie magic happen.
And just like that, it is dark outside. Mr. Magic Fingers over here. So let's get into our Mindra four piece and see how she looks at nighttime. All right, completely dark in here. We're gonna turn on the switch right there, primed up, and we already got her turned on. Look at that blue. That is not so bad. A little bit brighter than I expected. Nice, let's cycle through a different color colors. Right there, looking nice. Let's check out the back. There we go. I think that's just enough light to be able to see what the hell we're grabbing. You can pick like a million different colors on this, but the actual physical box only can do like seven manual colors. But with the digital pad, you can go like in between each different little hotspot, if you will. Pick different ones, go to music, and have it like go to your voice. Boop, 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 boop. Have it automatic, or you can pick your own different color uh, while it's beaten to the music. One will, quick thing I do gotta note is that its sensitivity is so high that uh, it really doesn't go to the beat of the music because it's picking up so much like in between each beat. It just doesn't really do a great, great job. I'll show you what I mean using this DJ slow and throw track. I'll give it up to like 35 volume. DJ slow and throw. Sorry, having a hard time focusing here. See how, see how it doesn't really go with like the kick beat? Uh, maybe if I had some bass going, it could handle that a little bit better. But I noticed even on my Bluetooth speaker, when I first tested it on the table, it was doing the same thing. It just feels like it's a little too high of a sensitivity. Well, there we have it, guys. A quick little test and installation with our Minger 4 piece. I think it's decent enough to leave in Little Blue for a little while. What do you guys think? And just to spread the wealth a little bit to you guys watching this, we have an Instagram giveaway with a four piece right here. So make sure you follow our Instagram at EXO Contralto. We'll be putting up more information on how to win this just with a comment based giveaway in the future. So make sure you stay tuned to the channels. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Much more content on the way. And announcement time, Slamology 2018 is upon us. I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. Driving what, like a thousand miles one way to go hang out with all of our base head friends. So if you're in the area nearby Indianapolis, Indiana, some of the biggest, some of the world's biggest sound systems will be in one place at one time. So please try to make a point to maybe make it out and have a, a good time with all of us. So this is EXO signing out, just trying to get some stuff done. Got a lot of stuff in store this weekend. Can't wait. All right, until the next video, this is EXO signing out with the Ninja 4 piece.